I'm home, baby. Back in LA's loving arms. Stop by the nearby breakfast spot to get breakfast. I should really be cooking more these days. I really need to save the money, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never do the thing that's good for me. Oh man, it's already been a day. <laughs> it's already been a day. Anyway, I'm sure you're probably like wondering like, Jay, what do you mean? Like, you know, you're back in... LA's loving arms like what even does that mean well friends I'm gonna be honest with y'all I haven't really been living in LA <laughs> so if you can't tell by like the background and everything I've moved moved into a new apartment and look this is a video I've been wanting to make for a very long time so for those of you who've been like you know, following the channel and my journey and everything like that. You guys know that I've always just talked about how I hated where I lived. And I don't know if y'all, you know, were just like, oh, you know, he hates the apartment or, you know, he just like hates the apartment complex because of like his neighbors and blah, blah, blah. That's not really what I was saying. I hated where I lived. And where I lived was... A city called Corona. So again, I know y'all are just like, but Jay, I thought you lived in Los Angeles. Like you left Brooklyn, you moved out to LA and that's where you've been. Yeah, so originally I did move to Los Angeles. But when the pandemic hit, y'all knew that, you know, I was kind of losing my shit. <laughs> and I wanted to move to a place where I could have some quiet and I could have some space. Because my mental, my, look, I was suffering mentally at the beginning of the pandemic. One of my homegirls, you know, I talked to her and she was just like, she's also, you know, she was looking to move and she actually gave me a list of places that she had been looking at. And, you know, I looked through this list and I saw this one apartment complex. I don't know why it spoke to me, but I was just like, you know what? This seems pretty cool. I mean, I even like investigated. I got in the car and I drove there and I was just like, oh, you know, I like this area and everything seems cool. Think about it, though. Think about it. I was fooled. I was duped. I was fooled. I was hoodwinked. I was bamboozled. All that stuff because this area that I was looking at this apartment that I was looking at was in Corona and at this time like we're still talking like July 2020 so still you know you know a few months into the pandemic but still pretty early and what didn't really click was that no one was outside <laughs> like unless you were an essential worker or what have you or you were just someone who just did not give a fuck. No one was really outside. So the journey to Corona was easy. It was nice and quiet because literally nobody was outside. <laughs> so I was like, let's run it. So yeah, I made that move out to Corona and initially things were cool. But then as some of y'all know, had issues with a noisy upstairs neighbor so after a few months of that, I ended up moving to a different apartment within the same complex, not realizing that I was moving next door, right next door, to a rapper. And I'm not going to lie, his music is pretty good. <laughs> but it's just the fact that he would treat his apartment, like his living room, like a recording studio. And just like blast music as loud as possible. I mean, I guess I should be thankful that he did that in the daytime, but as someone who works from home, as someone who writes, as someone who needs 
you know. <laughs> As someone who needs to not live next to like thumping bass, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, it just wasn't ideal. It just, it wasn't ideal. And not only that, but there was a family that moved in underneath me and, you know, little girl, maybe like eight or nine years old. And she liked to scream at the top of her lungs, sing Alicia Keys at the top of her lungs. She would grunt, growl like an animal, like a wild animal. So between those two, it was just like, it was a very, very miserable situation. But you know, quite honestly, neighbor noise is a thing, like that's gonna happen no matter where you live and is what it is. You know, it can be annoying, but is what it is. But the main thing, the big thing about living in Corona was that it was just far. Like if you watch my videos and I talk about hating where I live and everything, you know, I always say something like, I feel like I'm far from the action. I feel like, you know, I'm out of the mix. It's difficult to network. It's difficult to collaborate. It's just difficult to do anything that I wanted to do out here because it was far. And I didn't realize just how far it was until I was stuck out there. So just to give y'all an idea, Corona, Corona's not even like in LA County. <laughs> Corona's in Riverside County, and it's about a good, I would say, 60, 60 miles east of L.A. It's not a straight shot. It's it's kind of weird. It's kind of difficult getting there. But yeah, it's not a straight shot. Like, there's really only one way to get to Corona, and that's like the 91. I mean, there are a couple of ways that you can get to the 91, but the 91 is really the only way to get to Corona. And the worst thing is that with no traffic, it's about an hour from Corona to Los Angeles. And when I say no traffic, I mean like absolutely no traffic, no one on the highway. <laughs> if there's traffic, oh man, you're looking at anywhere from like an hour and a half to three hours. That's not an exaggeration, friends, three hours. And I'm gonna tell you all about that in a minute. But yeah, that, um, that distance, that drive, that journey from Corona to LA was just, it was treacherous. So when you guys would see me like hanging out, going out, maybe going to a museum, hanging out in Hollywood, seeing friends, doing whatever, my strategy was always to leave Corona as early as possible to avoid traffic and then stay out as late as possible once again to avoid traffic. <laughs> So a lot of those Hollywood nights, I'd be hanging out to like 2, 2.30 in the morning because I knew I could hit that highway and be home by about 3.30 in the morning. But yeah, I got tired of living out there. Like that shit got old quickly. And so I was always on the look for a new apartment back in Los Angeles. Like y'all even know, like last year, you know, I was, I was so mad. You know, I looked at an apartment and I liked it. And I lost it because I didn't apply for it right away. <sighs> like the property manager was just like, think about it. And if you still want the apartment, come back tomorrow and apply for it. And that's what I attempted to do. And she was just like, oh, I rented that apartment. And I was like, how did you, how did you rent that apartment? She was like, well, you didn't apply for it. I was like, you told me not to. And she was just like, well, so that was a lesson learned. That was definitely a lesson learned. All right. So now I told you all that. Here's how I found my current apartment. One of the things that made moving back to LA difficult for me was that I didn't want to just move anywhere. Like since I've been out here in California, I have moved a total of, well now seven times, but prior to this move, six times. So I was just like, the next move I make has to be my last move for a while. I do not want to just like move any old where, and then a year later, move again. I knew that I wanted to move like right into my next spot that I plan on being in for several years. With that in mind, there was an area that I knew I wanted to live in. I was inflexible about this. Like, didn't want to move back to like downtown or Westlake. Didn't want to live on the east side. I'm sorry. To my east side people, didn't want to do that. 
And I certainly didn't want to move to the valley. Corona was in a valley. And it was always like 10 to 20 degrees hotter <laughs> than it was in L.A. And so I imagine that the San Fernando Valley is pretty similar in that respect. So places like North Hollywood, Burbank, Valley Village, like all that, wasn't trying to do that. But I knew where I wanted to live. So I would always just, you know, look at apartments in that area, see what was available, see what, you know, prices, what price range, you know, apartments were in, see what amenities were available or not available. You know, just little stuff like that. Please ignore the iron in the background. <laughs> you know, I do that every once in a while. Whatever. Just window shopping apartments, right? So, you know, I was looking, I was looking, you know, on different websites and I spotted this apartment. I was like, wow, it's, it's like right where I want. I could certainly swing the rent. I was just like, this is looking pretty cool. You know, there are certain things I would have to sacrifice like a dishwasher and an in-unit washer dryer. And it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's, that was stuff that I'd lived without before. So I could deal. I could deal. I was like, all right, let me just see. So I hit up property manager or whatever. And I was like, is the apartment available? They're just like, yeah, if you want to come see it, you know, we can arrange a time. All right, bet. So we arrange the time. I leave my apartment in Corona to come see this apartment in Los Angeles. Fam, three hours. So I'm headed to look at an apartment. I left the crib pretty early because I knew that traffic would be crazy. But I had no idea traffic was going to be this crazy. I mean, I did, but I did, but I never have to deal with this traffic. So for as long as I've been out here, I'm still not used to this. This still blows my mind. I do not understand how people can do this every day. Ah, oh, fam. No. Oh. Actually, three and a half hours. Because once it got to the three hour mark, I had to reach out and, and ask if we could push our appointment by 30 minutes because the traffic was just insane. But fine, get here, look at the apartment, you know, see everything with the property manager. I'm just like, this is, it's perfect. It's where I want to be. It's a small building. It's not like a large, you know, massive complex. So not that many tenants, no children, no pets. I was like, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. So property manager was just like, do you want to apply? And I said, yes, let me go ahead and apply right now. So filled out the application, got the uh, application fee. Now here's the thing. I did all that. I went to a, ne a nearby bar, had a couple of beers, like an hour later, an hour after filling out the application, they called me back and they were, they were just like, if you want it, it's yours. If you can drop off like the, you know, deposit and everything, it's yours. So y'all better believe I went to the bank. <laughs> I got the cashier's check. I was ready to go. I wasn't going to lose this one. And you know, the only, the only, I guess, bad thing was that I was supposed to, um, supposed to go to Memphis for my birthday. And I taken like a week and a half off, you know, to go back to Memphis, see family, check everybody out. But getting this apartment was so quick and so unexpected that I had to cancel my Memphis trip. Like, I decided I was going to use that week to pack and move. And I'm going to let y'all know, moving is expensive. And making this move from Corona back to, to L.A., <laughs> I will say this. I probably could have funded a short film or even a no-budget feature film for the amount that it cost to move back. <laughs> So to, uh, to my Memphis people, I'm so sorry. That's why I didn't come back. I don't know. Might see y'all for Christmas or New Year. <laughs> but yeah, uh, literally like the week of my birthday is what I used to like pack. Got movers and they moved me in. And uh, it was actually pretty smooth. Smoothest move ever. Like even easier than moving out to Corona. Like this was a smooth move, so... Yeah. And, you know, once the move was done, of course, I celebrated.
things. I'm back, baby. I'm, I'm back. Like, I'm back in L.A. What a journey. What a journey. And even though I've been here for, you know, a few weeks now, I'm still unpacking. I'm still trying to get everything straight. Like, still living out of boxes and bins and still breaking stuff down. It's, you know, it's crazy. Like, I'm not even going to show you all my bedroom because shit is everywhere. <laughs> but... I am firmly in the new apartment. I'm firmly back in Los Angeles. I just feel better mentally. So it's just like, I feel like I'm in, like even in a better place to like write. So there's that. Absolutely gonna, you know, try to get some collaborations in. You know, I'm already just like, you know, meeting with people, talking with folks, like this is what we wanna do. This is how we wanna, it's already happening. It's already happening. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm just really, really, really happy and thankful to be back in LA, to be where I want to be. And just like I said, like, you know, it's, um, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Oh man. So everything's all gravy, right? You know, I'm got everything I wanted, you know, the, the type of apartment, the type of living situation, you know, I'm exactly where I want to be and away from noisy neighbors and all that. So everything is gravy, right? Well, that last point. <laughs> yeah, I got to talk to y'all about my neighbors, but I'm going to save that for another video. <laughs>